Uh, the member from down south, Nuk Karaka. <laughs> Kia ora, e te mana whakawā, Māori ora. Uh, tēnei te mihi uh, e hurino te whare nei, e mihi ati kia koutou katoa. Uh, te mana whakawā, one of the most powerful concepts for Māori is Tūraka Waiwai. This is often translated as a place to stand. So it highlights the fact that the centre of our identity as Māori is our connection to the land. So where the Europe, when the Europeans came to New Zealand, they viewed land as a commodity to be owned by people, and Māori viewed land as Papatuanuku, the mother who gives birth to all. So land provided an important economic base for Māori. It allowed them to provide all resources they needed to feed and shelter their whānau. But, sir, land means much more than that to us. It is much deeper culturally and particularly within these connotations. Sir, land represents our identity, our history and our future. Traditionally, sir, Māori did not own plots of land. Rather, ownership rights of various kinds extended from the relationships between hapu and the resources of the land. Sir, so the years since the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840 have seen huge and drastic changes to Māori land. We're all familiar, sir, with the massive alienation of land that occurred, with less than 5% of all land remaining in Māori hands by 1987. In fact, sir, until 1993, Māori land law focused on providing a legal framework to transfer land out of Māori control. The Tatūtu Whenua Māori Land Act, sir, in 1993 changed that and put the focus on retention of Māori land. Sir, that act also highlighted the importance of utilisation. How Māori land, sir, is used to maximise Māori economic development. But actually, sir, the focus of the law is on retention and preventing any further alienation of land. That is what's been done under this act. Sir, since 1993, we have seen a huge number of treaty settlements progressed, mostly under the two national governments, sir, to date. This has resulted in a great deal of land returning to Māori ownership, over 190,000 hectares by 2012, and largely under this present minister. Sir, there is now a need to update the legislative framework for Māori land and to, and to correct the balance to bring a bigger focus on the utilisation of Māori land. Sir, retention is still important, but that is what we have seen already, and it's been done relatively well. Sir, it is the utilisation of our land where the current law has been letting us down. Many large areas of Māori land are underperforming because the current legislation does not give owners of that land the freedom or the decision-making powers they need to use that land to its full potential. Mr Speaker, the Tatūta Whenua Māori Bill has undergone a very extensive progress before coming to this parliament today. I want to acknowledge the work of the Honourable Christopher Finlinson, who in 2012 put in place a panel to review the Tatūta Whenua Māori Land Act 1993. I also acknowledge the members of this panel, consisting of Matanuku Mahuika, Dion Tuta, Toko Kapia, and Patsy Reddy, our Governor-General in waiting. Sir, I acknowledge the work of Tapuni Kōkiri as well. All of the other agencies, iwi and hapu, who have participated in the consultation process to date. Mr Speaker, I want to particularly pay tribute to the Honourable Tūrilua Fravel, the Minister of Māori Development. Sir, when I look at this Minister, I am reminded of Sir Apadanga Nata, another man, sir, who stood in this house as a leader amongst his people. In the same mould as Nutta, sir, I believe that Tūrilua Favre will be remembered as a man of foresight, a man with the vision to see what could be achieved for Māori, sir, the intelligence to choose the right solutions and the drive to carry them through. Sir, and this bill may well go down in history as his greatest achievement. A groundbreaking piece of legislation, sir, with far-reaching effects on Māori wellbeing, on Māori wellbeing in this country. Sir, at times the Minister has had a great deal, has had to put up with a great deal of nasty stuff 
from our own people, from those who have perhaps not understood the great strengths this bill will bring to our people. Through it all, he has captained this waka to this point, and I look forward to working with him to see this bill through the rest of the process. Sir, so, as the two ministers have already outlined, this bill has the potential to provide massive benefits to Māori, unlocking the commercial value of so much underutilised land. Sir, so, I hope that this House, I hope that this House can be united in our desire to reform Māori land law for the benefit of Māori and of New Zealand. Sir, so, the Māori Affairs Select Committee looks forward to working on this legislation in our usual principle and pragmatic demur. Sir, as the Honourable Tūrua Favell said, and Mecca Whaiteri also, Fatu Naro Naro Te Tangata, Toi Tū Te Whenua. The land still remains when the people have disappeared. I also say, sir, in regards to the Minister, this one for the Minister, sir, He tuku mata anō tō te tauka. Sir, that means fortune favours the brave. And, sir, on that note, I commend this bill to the House. Kia ora. <coughs>